Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Sunday morning simulcast for romwills.com. And I'm your host, Rom Wills. You never know. Now, this is a subject that I've covered in part um, in several of my podcasts and several videos as well. And it's just basically just maximizing your talent, um, monetizing your knowledge, just taking stock of what you have because you never know. Now, I'm going to use myself as an example, right? Now, people know me from podcasts, videos, uh, books, blogs, whatever. I, I got a... (laughs) I got a lot of stuff out there, really. But I thought about maybe 10 years ago. 10 years ago. It shows you how stuff can uh, change. And, well, some people might say 10 years is a long time. But it's also a short period of time if you really think about it, right? But I remember 10 years ago, I did not think in terms of doing videos, podcasts, or even blogs. That was the funniest thing. I, most I had was some books and, you know, I would do a seminar or a relationship panel. But I, I really didn't think about just sharing my knowledge that way. My thing was, hey, I got some stuff, a few things, which, you know, the relationship stuff, which represent only a tiny portion of, you know, the library that's in my head. But that's all I was thinking about. And I was thinking to myself, even with that, I was like, ain't too many people going to be buying stuff just on relationships. You know, I ain't even thinking those terms, right? Like, you know, I had anything else of interest to really say. I honestly didn't. But the thing was, you never know. You know, I, re- I remember I used to see like some YouTube videos and, I, and I've said this before and it's kind of funny Seeing how as I put out stuff every day now and like even on multiple platforms. And I was like, man, I don't think I could do that. <laughs> you know, I didn't even think of those terms or, you know, writing. I knew I could write, but, you know, just writing a blog every week or something. I didn't think of those terms or just anything. And really, what am I making money off of? What am I doing? I'm just sharing stuff that I know. And see, the thing is, my quest for knowledge began when I was little. I remember two things my grandmother got me. She got me these things, they were called Bible stories. They were like, uh, they talked about all the books in the Bible, but they had illustrations. And it was written in a way that a young person could understand. Or a seven-year-old. They were probably meant for 12-year-olds, but this seven-year-old understood it perfectly. Right? So I used to go through them, like, uh, pardon the pun, religiously. Right. And also, she also got me some encyclopedias and I used to just go through them. And someone would say, oh, man, he's doing all that nerdy stuff. I was just like, no, I was developing something for later on. I didn't even realize it because even to this day, and I've said this in several videos, I like to know stuff. (laughs) I mean, I will have if I if I don't keep it under control, I will have a stack of magazines on just different subjects. Uh, a bad habit I got. I'm going to say it's a bad habit. I will buy a magazine just for like a two-page article. <laughs> I will pay like eleven ninety nine for a two-page article and stuff instead of just reading it in the store. <laughs> I'm serious. But then what I would do is I would still go through the articles. I would like everything, even some stuff. And I would learn stuff. I, it never fails. I get it for one thing and then I buy it. And there's three or four other things. And I would get ideas like I'm constantly searching for knowledge. Like I'm one of those people. You want to keep me happy. Keep a bookstore near me. Make sure my Internet connection is good so I can just surf and I'm good to go. But, you know, when you do all that, you don't think in terms it's going to make money. Even some people who knew me then I wasn't I was like, man, y'all so talented. I, I don't have anything like that. I really said that. I honestly said that. I know some detractors might say, Rom, you you don't even seem like you would have that level of humility. I did because you know what? If this is for everybody, that's why I'm even sharing this story like that. You never know. You never know that something that you're not thinking about that you're interested in might be of interest to someone. 
And uh, you know, it could be it could be ants. You might know how ants do everything. You never know. You might think it's just something that you're doing, but then you never know. Somebody's house or something could have an ant infestation, and you could probably save them money with uh, exterminate by saying, "Hey, why don't y'all just do this? This'll keep all the ants out, or something." Or they're going to do that. I mean, in fact, that's how a lot of stuff gets discovered, and you find out stuff. You know, there's people, you know, they, they just get in, they get interested in some stuff, sometimes obscure, like the mating habits of monarch butterflies or something. But something to come up where they need it. Like somebody needs that information. Or bees. That's a big thing now. You know, a lot of people talking about the bees are disappearing. Well, if you get somebody who studied bees, those persons, all of a sudden, they become very important. And it's like that. It's like no matter what, you could be somebody who is good at exercise. I got a gentleman I know. All he's all he's done, he used to just casually just show people how to exercise, have groups of people exercise. And he didn't think anything of it at first. And then somebody said, hey, you can make money. He was like, oh. And he thought about it. And that dude makes money just by leading group exercises. You know, you just never, you never know. You never know where your talent is. You never know what something that you don't think about. Something that's intrinsic to you. Something that is just casual to you. You know, somebody else might be willing to pay money for it. You know, I remember back in the day. I've used this example before, but it's a very good one. I remember back in the day when breakdancing was becoming big. Everybody was talking about breakdancing. And at the time, somebody, they were people, young guys, getting like $35 a person, a head, just to teach them how to breakdance. You know, you had some young black kids teaching some uh, middle-aged white folks how to breakdance. And some of them would say, that's crazy, but, you know, you never know. And sometimes one of the things that a person has to do is really look in the mirror. Because I, I, I meet so many people who have no idea what they want to do in life, can't think of what they're good at. But then there's always that one thing that comes to them naturally. And like I said, this has been a constant theme in all of my podcasts, some of my videos, it was just you never know what you're sitting on. You sitting, you might be sitting on gold, right? You know, there was a story, right? And I read this in uh, Dennis Kimbrough's Think and Grow Rich or Black Choice about an acre of diamonds, right? And I'm not sure. Where, I think he got the story from a minister from the 1800s. I think that might be the original story. Um, yeah, I'll find something around here, but... Basically, it talked about this uh, this uh, farmer. He was dirt poor. He wasn't making any money and stuff, right? And he sold. He he wanted he wanted to get his riches. So he sold his farm to someone else and searched the world for riches, right? He searched the world. He went all over the place and tried this and that, and he didn't make it. He ended up killing himself. Now, flashback to the person who actually bought the farm. That that dude, he started digging on the farm and, and ran into a, a vein of diamonds. He had a di- he, had, he had a diamond far, farm right there. I mean, that farm, whatever it is. He had a bunch of diamonds on his property. And all he did was just dig and saw what he had in front of him, you know? And that's what everybody has to do. Everybody hearing my voice. If you're trying to figure out what you're going to do in life, listen to what I'm saying. Look in the mirror. Look at what you're doing. Don't think. Don't, hey, you know what? It could be something as simple as being able to clean. Clean a home. Seriously. They, it could be something as simple as being very meticulous, just cleaning, period. Not even a home. Think about the detailing business. I remember when that just, people were just starting to really detail stuff. Yeah, before it was just people just go to a car wash, whatever, <laughs> you know, vacuum out. And I'm not even sure where detailing started. You know, they probably already already had it. But yeah, you got some people. I, I knew this cat one time, right? 
And the dude didn't seem like he was, whole, you know, very educated. He, he really didn't. He didn't seem overly bright, but he could clean he could clean out a car, though. And that dude, and this was back in the day money, he charged like, he would be outside this flea market and he would charge people $20 a pop to detail their car. I mean, that, that's, that's cheap now. It's kind of probably cheap then. But he was very good at it. I mean, you know, just as simple as cleaning or uh, being able to arrange stuff. Like you got, I've, I've known of some people, they get paid a lot of money just to do feng shui. Or, you know, set up something, whatever. You know, you just never know. And But in order for you to know, you have to look at yourself. Don't, don't look outside yourself for those diamonds. Look within first. So that's my message for today. All right. I want everybody to keep rising and transforming. Peace.